Hi, Dave here, and I've got my little helper here, George, with me today. She's going to be helping me talk about wildlife in our gardens. We're going to look at how to build your own wildlife garden, like we've been doing here over the years, and how you can help improve your garden for wildlife, and the different wildlife you could possibly expect to bring in because of it here. We've got lots of different wildlife in our garden, ranging from birds to amphibians to mammals, and so we're going to show you what we've done here to attract them into the garden. So... Let's get started. Hey George. Yeah. <laughs> okay then, so this is our little wild area in our garden here. We don't really touch it. It's got all the old offcuts uh, from the bushes, from the plants in here. It's even got our old Christmas tree in here. You might be able to spot it just behind me. And this is perfect for wildlife of all shapes and sizes. It has got lots of nooks and crannies, lots of hideaways. It stops the cats getting in. Uh, ideally as well and we'll put in a little close-up in a minute but we've actually got a little mouse living under here well I say living living nearby but regularly coming under here for protection and for food so we've actually started feeding her ourselves putting in little diced bits of carrots and vegetables small dish of water so that she's got some fresh water because mice only tend to come out in the daytime if they're feeding young so she'll only tend to risk herself by coming out in the daytime. So she's gonna be taking that food back to her young. She's gonna be storing it up as energy for herself. So it's absolutely ideal to have that. As you might be able to see here behind George is our hedgehog feeding station. Now George, what have we got in there at the moment? And we've got some mouses. We've got some mice, they do like to eat in there. What do we feed them? Um, we feed them some hedgehog food. Hedgehog food, that's right. You can get dry hedgehog food to put in there at the moment. You can also, if you can't, <laughs> one of our predators has come into the shot here. If you can't get proper hedgehog food, cat biscuits are ideal. They don't attract the flies, it doesn't go off. But again, same sorts of nutrients as well. But hedgehog food, dried hedgehog food, is the best that you can get. Okay then, let's carry on our tour. Okay, so having a closer look at our hedgehog feeder here. Basically, it's just a plastic box. It's a plastic box that I've cut a small hole in. Um, I think it was about four or five inches by four or five inches or so. Not very big at all. Just big enough for a hedgehog, but not big enough for a cat. Um, and so that you can get your food in there right at the back. And then the most important thing, weigh it down so that nothing can tip it over. So I've got a couple of bricks on there and just to hold it down. And that will provide food for your hedgehogs. Another little feature to help out the hedgehogs in the garden is this little hedgehog home we've got here. And it's basically like the feeder, it's a box with a hole in it, upside down with some weight on it. But then also it's covered in all the bracken and all of the offcuts and bits and pieces there. So it's nice and hidden from any predators. And then over the front there, we've built a little tunnel for them, which is ideal for them to crawl into. So it's nice and hidden away. So that anything else such as foxes or badgers or anything like that, that they would normally try and steer away from in the wild. Nothing can get in there to get them. So this is our main pond at the moment here in our garden. It's a little bit empty because of all of the hot and beautiful weather we've been having, but it's not brilliant for the wildlife. But as you can see, you might be able to spot in there in the little corner. We've got ourselves a little visitor to our pond at the moment, a little frog there enjoying the shade, enjoying the wetness. Our pond is a molded plastic liner. You can get proper liner sheets that you can dig out your own pond with, or it can be something simple, something really simple, just like an old mixing bowl. But here is our main pond in our back garden. Now around the pond as well, we've got lots of different pots and things all turned over. Perfect for small mammals and amphibians such as frogs just to find a little hidey hole in overnight or whatever they needed. And then around the pond we've lined ours with not only some of my carvings but lots of rocks and pebbles and things here. And this is fantastic for small animals to try and get around to and to really crawl between. Earlier today there was a little mouse poking its head out showing us what she could do there and it's perfect for all the animals in the wildlife. The one thing you will need in your garden is water. Water will attract all other wildlife to your garden. If you can get just the simplest little bucket in there, it will attract them. Okay, so this here is our other little pond that we have in the garden. It's fairly new, so it doesn't really have any visitors yet, but uh, all it is is a large mixing bowl. We've made it a bit pretty with all of the fancy stones. Who painted those? 
you did, didn't you? And then all we've done is put a little bit of dirt, some rocks in the bottom, which is ideal for those smaller, tiny little bugs and things growing in there. And while we were clearing out the garden, we also found a little remnant of our old bathroom. Our little uh, tap here just to make it look a bit pretty. But leave it in there. Rainwater is the best water you can use to put in there. It's not full of all of the cleaning fluids and things that go into our normal drinking water. Leave it to fill up with the rain and then leave it well alone. That's when you'll get the visitors come by. Right, so this is our bird feeding station here. We get lots of sparrows, starlings, uh, blackbirds, rooks, uh, pigeons, all sorts of birds that come in here. And uh, George, can you tell us uh, some of the food that we've got out? We've got some water and some bird food. What kind of bird food do we put out? Um, we put some seeds and also worms. That's right, we put mealworms out. And the birds especially really enjoy the fat balls, don't they? Show us the fat balls in there, fantastic. Now the feeders themselves, they can be any brand. It doesn't have to look pretty. You can make your own fat balls and hang them on pieces of string. They're dead easy. They're just uh, normal fat that you get from the shops and uh, some bird seed. It's dead easy. A little trick of mine is to add a touch of flour. Stops it getting too sticky, but that's all you really need. And the trick to getting those birds to keep coming back is be regular with it yourself. Every day, put a little bit of food out. Every day, Get out there, clear it out, make sure it's nice and clean. Now the water's dried up a little bit today and the birds have been having a lot to drink. It's a very hot day, but keep regularly going out. Keep regularly filling it up and topping it up. Can't stress that enough for them. And that's when you'll get the lots of visitors. This is another great little way to attract birds into your garden. All we've done here is using little hooks um, that were bought cheap in a pound shop and some soup mugs. We've just tipped them onto their sides, filled them up with bird seed, and then we've got a little tray there as well, ready with water. You might well attract the birds in, you might not, but if you've not got it there, you're never gonna know. Okay, so planting in your wildlife garden is a main essential as well. Putting in the right plants will get your right pollinators in, all of your insects, your bees, your birds, your butterflies, as well as keeping the other animals in your garden hidden and safe. So, you've got all sorts of plants, uh, that we've got here. Herbs are a fantastic one. We've got some mint growing in here. Big recommendation, don't put mint straight into your flower beds. You'll never get rid of it again. But having some herbs um, and some spices growing in your garden, fantastic for all the animals. Um, having yourself some wildflower seeds going. Now we've started ours in pots. They're not fantastic at the moment. We've had such dry weather, it's hard to get them going. But our wildflower seeds adore nutrient deficient soil so you don't want a rich soil you don't want a brilliant soil now unfortunately we're really great at recycling aren't we we are and we put a lot of our leftovers in with the soil which gives it lots of nutrients things like fire ash don't we yeah. and our vegetable peelings and uh, all of our mulch and things from the garden all goes on our soil doesn't it, it makes it nice and comfy for the animals <laughs> that's a good word it fills it with the nutrients makes it nice and dark and moist but that, unfortunately, not great for wildflowers. They do love their dry, nasty soil. So that's what we've started them on here. And then we can put them in with the rest of it once they're established. Other flowers you want, flowers that are flat and open so that insects can easily land on them. You also want flowers that are quite closed and uh, covered over that will hide that pollen inside there, which is fantastic for those pollinators as well. Look for UK native flowers or if you're in America native to the USA wherever you are look for those native flowers because that is what your wildlife will adore the most also when it comes to wildlife looking at plants that provide lots of shade and lots of covering that, such as lords and ladies a big uh, unwanted uh, flower in a lot of places because it is quite poisonous but for wildlife it's fantastic there's bright red berries perfect for the birds and for the other animals and the leaves are huge and really cover up uh, spaces for small mammals such as mice and amphibians and all sorts of things okay should we go to the next one yeah. okay so log piles are a fantastic thing for all invertebrates the bugs your worms your centipedes your flies your, your bees, all sorts of things will find a lovely little home. In fact, we've even got ants running around there at the moment trying to find little things to eat. So what sort of things have we found in the log piles before? Um, we found lots of ants and little spiders. Lots of little spiders. Anything else? And also some um, guinea pigs. 
guinea pigs. Ah. <laughs> By guinea pigs, we mean wood lice. Chiggy pigs here in Cornwall. Um, but yeah, lots of wood lice hiding amongst all the dead wood. Ideal for them. And it's really important in a wildlife garden to bring in those invertebrates and all of those young, small bugs because that is what provides the food for the bigger animals, the ones that we as humans really love to see. The birds, the mice, the, the frogs, all those sorts of things that we love to see in our gardens. Hedgehogs as well, especially, as well. Really love to eat slugs, snails, small bugs. That's why we need them in our garden just as much as anything else. This is another little, wonderful little piece of recycling that you can do here is this was an old uh, chimney, one of the fire chimneys. It fell apart, it broke, got a bit of old. So what we did is we smashed it up a little bit more and placed it down. And what do you think this is going to be great for, George? Um, it will be great for some bugs. Some bugs, yeah. Anything else you think might like to live in them? Um, also some spiders. Spiders, that's right. And of course, as we said, that will then provide more food for the larger animals that will like getting in these little holes here, such as? Um, some nice food, but hedgehogs, hey, okay. lots of hedgehogs, hedgehogs and mice and voles and all sorts of things. We'll love to hide in there, find a little overnight space, absolutely fantastic for them. Right, that's our garden. I hope you really enjoyed having a look around. We really enjoyed showing you around our garden and uh, yeah, hopefully it's given you lots of different ideas on how you can make your gardens more wildlife friendly. There are three really easy main rules to go with it. One, provide somewhere wet, like a pond or a bucket full of water, and that will provide food, uh, drink for your animals in your garden. Two, provide food, whether it's seeds, whether it is bugs, whatever, provide food for the wildlife in your garden. And three, add in some shelter. Get your bit untidy, throw in some branches in a certain area, leave it, let the grass grow wild, get some flowers in there, let it go wild. That's all you need. So, we've had great fun, haven't we, George? If you've enjoyed the video and you've got something out of it, please do hit the like button down below. Uh, hit the subscribe button if you want to see more videos. You might see George again in the future. You might see some of the other two of mine. But please do follow us, like the other videos, see what you see. Cheers. Thanks.